Our last big rule for derivatives will be the chain rule. So let's start with a motivating example. I'm gonna have some function g. Let's suppose g is differentiable. We can find its derivative at any x. I'm gonna consider g cubed, and then we're gonna take its derivative. So I can consider g cubed as g times g squared. But if I apply the derivative, this is just gonna be the product rule. Okay, that'll give me g prime times g squared plus g times g squared prime. Then we can get the derivative of g squared prime or g times g prime by applying the product rule again. We expand that out, collect things, what you're gonna wind up with is three g squared times g prime. So if you notice, this is almost our power rule. If I had x cubed, we took its derivative, we would have three x squared. The only catch now is we're gonna have three g squared and then we have to tack on a derivative of g. So this is how our chain rule is gonna work. Now, before we get to the chain rule, the idea is gonna be first, you're gonna to have to think of your functions in terms of compositions. So in this case, if I'm looking at my g cubed, there's gonna be inside function and outside function. The inside function is gonna be our g of x, so let's just call that u. So that's gonna be my inside. On the outside, well, if I let u be equal to g of x, then I can say we have f of u equal to u cubed on the outside. Then if I would take the derivative of my f or my u cubed, it's just gonna be three u squared, and then we have to tack on a u prime. Let's formalize this with the statement of the chain rule. Let's take a look at the statement of our chain rule. We're gonna have function f, which is differentiable at the point u equal to g of x, we have a function g, which is differentiable at the point x. If I take f composed with g, take its derivative, the rule is gonna be you take f prime, evaluate at g of x, and then multiply by g prime of x. You squint at this, this looks like what we would want the product rule to be. If I take f composed with g prime, that's just gonna be equal to f prime times g prime. Note, we can't really just say that because we have to be careful of what we put on the inside of f prime. All right, let's set up a little bit of formalism for how you do your bookkeeping. So to use your chain rule, what are you first gonna have to pay attention to? If I hand you a function and just say, take its derivative using the chain rule, you're gonna have to identify your function as a composition. So that means you gotta figure out what's the outside function f, what's the inside function g? Okay, the inside function g would be, if I wanna just compute a number with the function, it's the first thing you evaluate. So, let's take a look at an example. So here, if I had h of x equal to x squared plus one to the fifth power, if I wanna compute, say, h of one, the first thing I'd have to compute would be x squared plus one when I put a one in that. So, my x squared plus one is gonna be my g of x. We'll wanna call that u just to keep things a little bit nicer looking. All right, okay, u is our inside, call that equal to g of x. Then we'll need u prime, which is just g prime, evaluated at x. Now, once you put in your u for your h, what's left over is gonna be your outside function. So in this case, I would have f of u is equal to u to the fifth. Then f prime of u would be just five u to the fourth power. Okay, going to our chain rule, then what you're gonna do is, you can rewrite that as just h prime of x equals five u to the fourth times u prime. And now I just sub back in for u and u prime. So that'll give me five x squared plus one to the fourth times two x. So you wanna do this bookkeeping when you first start out using the chain rule. There's a quick way to do things, but you gotta get a little bit nimble with using the chain rule with identifying the inside, outside, and keeping track of things. So the quick way you do this is like this. So I look at my function, h of x, cover up the inside. I see I have something to the fifth power. Its derivative is just gonna be five something to the fourth power. I uncover that. That goes back inside, so I'll have five x squared plus one to the fourth. And I just have to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is two x then you notice that's gonna give me exactly what I got, doing all this bookkeeping 
on the side gets me to the same answer. We're gonna believe, we're gonna believe the chain rule. It's gonna to have to work in the most basic case. So that'll be when I take the composition of two lines. So let f of x be equal to m1x plus b1, g of x equal to m2x plus b2. I take the composition, so what does that mean? I wanna take g of x, and wherever there's an x and f, we're gonna replace it with that g of x. So I'm gonna have for f of x, m1 times parentheses, m2x plus b2, and parentheses, and then plus b2. So when we expand all that out, what are we gonna get? We're gonna get m1, m2 times x plus m1, b2 plus b1. Now, that has a lot of stuff floating around in it. The only thing we really care about though is the slope. The slope is gonna be what's attached to x. So the slope of our composition is gonna be m1 times m2. Since I have a line, the tangent line and the line are gonna be exactly equal at any point. So the slope of our tangent lines or derivatives are gonna be equal to m1 times m2. If I take f prime, that's gonna be equal to m1. So if I put g of x into f prime, I'm still gonna get m1 out, okay? f prime of anything gives me m1. If I take g prime of x, we're gonna have m2. So we notice if I take the composition, take its derivative, we get m1, m2, and that's gonna be the product of f prime and g prime. So our chain rule definitely works in this case. Let's take a look at a proof of the chain rule. This proof won't be good for the general case, but it will be good enough to help us understand why the chain rule is true. So let's write down our limit definition of derivative. In this case, we'll have x going to x zero instead of our usual h going to zero, and then we'll just follow our nose. So we'll have f composed with g prime of x zero equals the limit x going to x zero of f composed with g on x minus f composed with g at x zero divided by x minus x zero. So to get somewhere with this, I wanna multiply by one in the form g of x minus g of x zero over itself. Once I have that, I could split this into two fractions. So we see on the right side, that fraction is I take the limit of x going to x zero, it's just gonna go down to g prime of x zero. On the left-hand side, let's note some things. First, g is differentiable at x zero, so it's gonna be continuous at x zero. That means as x goes to x zero, g of x is gonna to go to g of x zero. So our limit on the right is just gonna to go to f prime evaluated at the point g of x zero. So we multiply those two things together in our limit, and what do we wind up with? That's gonna be the exact expression we're using in our chain rule. f prime g of x zero times g prime of x zero. Now, in general, this proof won't work because if you note, there's no reason that g of x minus g of x zero can't become zero very close to when x goes to x zero. Okay, note, when we take a limit, we usually throw away our point, but in this case, just throwing away the point that we're interested in may not be enough. 